Welcome to Bold TV. I'm Mike Paul, filling in for Maria Dorfner this week. Today's guest has developed the first sustainable solution for the lifetime care of autistic children based on her experience with her own son, Nikki. Welcome, Adriana. It is a pleasure to be here, Mike. So tell us about your son, Nikki. Nikki was born uh, with something called tuberous sclerosis, and he's going to be 21 years old in December. He's nonverbal. He doesn't walk. He doesn't talk. He's not potty training. He doesn't feed himself. Oh. And he'd been going to the school, to the special school, but once they reach 21, they fall off the cliff. Um, yes. Meaning the services get cut 75%. And on the top of it, he's six feet two, 190, 200 pounds. And I am, you know, we're getting older as everybody is. And it's harder to taking care of him and lifting him up when he's dropping himself. So we started to look at different uh, solutions and yes. find, you know, if there's anything uh, for him there. So what led you to start Nikki's Gardens of Hope? I have a 10-year-old stepson who has both autism and ADHD, so I feel what you're going through and I understand uh, some of the things, some of the challenges, especially that you're going through. Uh, but tell us about Nikki's Garden of Hope. Is it a business? Is it a charity? Uh, in a few sentences, can you describe what it is? Well, it's combination of both, uh, believe it or not. Uh, I, we do not want to be dependent on a government because of the government cuts. The yes. tax credits to donations is not where they used to be. And having nonprofit organization that will be providing just the care and services for adults with autism and other um, disabilities. The for-profit is going to hold the real estate and incubator businesses that will employ people with disabilities, with autism, Down syndrome, and um, other uh, disabilities as well. So let me see if so I can summarize uh, exactly what it is that Nikki's Gardens of Hope has as some of its pieces. So number one, you also want to raise money from a charitable perspective, but the business side of it is you're seeking to have a holistic solution, if I understand it correctly, uh, for those, especially young adults that are moving from like 18 to let's say 21 and have to have their own living environment with their special needs. So from a holistic perspective, let's say you have one home you're starting with and you might have uh, several special needs adults that are living in this dwelling place. Will there be someone that lives there as a supervisor? Describe it for me as though it's one home. <clears throat> well, there will be nurses 24-7. It depends on the way they are disabled. My son needs, to help, I mean, my son needs care 24-7. Yes. And there are many like him, but there are also highly functioning uh, people with autism. So the whole project, it's literally building the community of combination of the disabled as my son and then highly functioning that it can work, be trained and work in our uh, community and the properties and incubator businesses. So we're not going to only provide the residential and that's it. We will try to give them as independent living as possible for the ones that they can work. Because I strongly believe that there's no disability, but there's a different abilities. Even my son has a different abilities. It's up to us to figure out what they're good at, what they like, and how we can help them to grow. Even in housing for highly functioning adults with disabilities, there's going to be somebody who's going to be able to help them with opening bank accounts. But they do want to be part of the society, and this is my whole goal, right. let them work, not only residential and that's it, Understood. but also a holistic approach to it. So yes, where are you looking for the first Nikki's Gardens of Hope, as you say, holistic community to be? So there is a property at uh, Esopos, upstate New York, that we're looking at. It's 520 acres. It's right on the Hudson. Has a beautiful views. What town? It's already school on the property as well. What town is that? It's Isipus. Isipus. What is that near? Yes. What other larger town? New Paltz. You... Near New Paltz. New okay. Paltz area. Yes, that's nice. Yes. Five hundred something property. acres. 
I'm sorry. Yes. 500 something acres, that's, that's quite a large, that is a community onto its own. So how much money are you seeking to raise? So right now, um, we did add Bob Zukolsky to our board, uh, board and we're looking to uh, raise from, believe it or not, donations, $500,000 for feasibility study because the approach we are taking, as we know, does not exist right now, combination between for-profit and non-profit. We need a feasibility studies to go and present this to the potential impact and socially responsible investors to prove that this might work. And after the impact study, um, how much money are you looking to raise? It has to be in the millions, for example. $65 million. Okay, $65 million for that initial 500 acre property, you believe that that would give you the holistic services and, and the first phase of what you're looking to do? Yes. Is there any other community or any other living facility with holistic services that is out there as an example, not exactly what you're seeking to do, but something that other people could look at to say that this is potentially doable if they're looking to make an invest investment. There is um, Discovery Center, Center for Discovery, upstate New York. There is also um, Anderson Center for Autism. There is New Hope Community, all upstate New York, and there are a few outside of New York as well. Do you think that is something that could be done in an urban environment? I know upstate New York well. I went to school there. I, my, my, my family has had property there. So I know the difference between upstate New York, for example, and New York City, very different. Uh, different as far as space and different as far as cost. But do you think this is also something that needs to be done in urban environments within cities around the country as well, not just in uh, rural communities, let's say, like upstate New York? Oh, definitely. It could be scalable, and this what we're trying to do. The only thing that what our project will have, it's the incubator businesses, that, you know, we're looking at having a lodge for parents and kids with autism and other disabilities to come and we will take care of the children and the parents can have the weekend or whole week, however long they're gonna stay for themselves. Because we believe that mental health of parents or caretaker is as important as um, health of the child or adult with disabilities. And right now, as we know, it does not exist any hotel or any hospitality like that. But to answer your question, yes, it could be scalable in the cities as well under different, um, you know, uh, planning yes. and different businesses. But yes. Adriana, I want to thank you so much for sharing your story. As I mentioned, it's close to my heart because I have a son who has autism. Thank you so much for sharing. And anyone who wants to get more information about Nikki's Gardens of Hope can look them up on the Internet at Nikki's Gardens of Hope dot com. And thank you for joining us. Please like and follow Bold TV. That was a very important subject. We thank you for joining us today. Goodbye.